pursue them outside the room. I will not shout order, order, but can you, if you have a discussion, a private discussion, can you have it outside the room? Otherwise, can you, may I ask you to sit down so we can start our meeting? As I said, like the, every IGF, we now for past years we had a final DC stock taking session to discuss what worked well, what worked less well. I think one of the concerns uh, in Paris meeting was that not every DC was given a 90 minute slot. I think that was sorted out, and I think every dynamic coalition had their slot, and I presume that. Your sessions went well, but uh, we can obviously also ask whether there is room for improvement. I know many sessions took place uh, this morning of the dynamic coalitions, but also obviously we want to take stock of the main session we had. My apologies that I was not able to assist that session, I had a conflicting commitment, but talking to people, what I heard was, and I talked to Tatiana and Michael, our two moderators, that it went extremely well, but my impression when I left the room was that it was disappointing the attendance of the session. The room was really very empty, and this is also something I think Miwe wish to address. Uh, and it, it was the same remark we had after in Geneva. We had an extremely interesting session, but also with very limited attendance. I think in Paris the attendance was better, but then we had a partner with uh, the business community, and I think that also drew attendance. But uh, I know Yuta is still eating her lunch, but you <laughs> uh, I would also be interested in hearing your comments. But uh, you already said it was a brilliant session, yes. It was a brilliant session. Uh with regard to the discussion, because we really worked out how much the work of the Dynamic Coalition is interrelated, uh, how much cooperation is already going on, although it's not always labeled like DC1 is cooperating with DC2, but there are interlinks between the work they are doing, not only related to the SDGs, although yesterday we talked about work related to the SDGs. With regard to the attention uh, to the session, I would say we didn't get the, le uh, the best and fortunate uh, time slot uh, for the session, so Thursday afternoon people might be a little bit exhausted or might just have the need to get them fresh air, go outside of the building or something like that. And there was also a claim that some of the dynamic collision sessions even clashed with the dynamic collision's main session or were somehow overlapping in, in the time frame and that was very unfortunate. So we should look into that deeper. It was suggested that the MAC looks into that. Maybe it's, it's uh, uh, between the MAC and the secretary to look at the schedule, whether there can be any overlaps avoided. And last but uh, not least point, I, I do think that uh, we achieved more attention for the session last year because we also invited uh, the private sector to join that session and discuss with us and that could also be a suggestion for next year when we look uh, how can we attract people from other sectors as well. Thank you. Just two comments on that. The, the scheduling, I mean that can be checked whether indeed there was an overlap but that's totally unacceptable, that's a, a no-brainer. I mean obviously the main session on DCs should not clash with the DC session. As to the timing, in Geneva we had, I think, it was Wednesday morning, first thing in the morning session. Then, was, then people should still be fresh, but then okay, maybe it was too early, and nobody came, but I think, and the comment was then made if all the members of the DCs at least came to the DC main session, that would be more people there. But I mean, this is something we ha just have to take note. It's obviously a DC main session, however we want to label it, doesn't seem to attract people. And another uh, issue I would also like to hear your opinions is, now we have all these discussions on IGF+, Plus, and I think if we try to enhance 
the IGF in whatever form that the DCs uh, should play and could play an important role because there's a lot of substantive work already going on, but maybe more can be done to link them better and to bring it also to the attention. But the floor is open. I don't know whether our moderators would like to comment. Is Tatiana here? Or? I can't see her. But she isn't here, but Michael, what you said at the end of the session yesterday about the, the, uh, the role being the glue for internet governance, uh, can you explain that a little bit more? Because I do think it phrase very really well what we were trying to say. Sure. Hi, everyone. Michael Ogia, Global Forum for Media Development and also representative of the Dynamic Coalition on the Sustainability of Journalism and News Media, the newest DC. Yesterday, uh, during the session, I mentioned that uh, I had written down at one point that I kind of had a realization that the DCs to me seem to really be kind of uh, the glue that in many ways binds um, so many aspects of the IGF program together. And actually, I'm going to go back to my notes to see if I can actually figure that out. And it's because, to me, the DCs um, create a co cohesion, a, co a cohesion between all of these different um, policy areas that are, are really as so at the forefront of the work that we're doing. And part of the reason why I, I started thinking about that after listening to all of the really fantastic inter, you know, interventions yesterday was that I actually felt so, on that stage, I felt so much pride to be part of the Dynamic Coalition community. And I, I mean, I, something I didn't really get to say enough was that um, you know, I was worried about almost, Tatiana talked a lot because I was worried about transparent, uh, about seeming partisan. What do I mean by that? I have been, in, on every single person on the stage there, I've been involved with, at least in some way or form, for the past five years, um, you know, almost two thirds of those DCs, I've been involved with them, whether it's editing text or um, going to, you know, being involved in the sessions or organizing or um, editing or whatever. I mean, uh, you know, so I, I really, I realized how much of my IGF experience is essentially earmarked by, um, by the DCs, and so, um, I, it, it, of course, you know, I didn't really know what to expect yesterday um, because, uh, you know, it, and I mean, for a lack of better of, of way to, a different way to put it, I just, you know, I wasn't, I wanted Tatiana to lead because I know that she has done this quite a, quite a bit already and I figured she would have, you know, a good way to, to structure and everything. However, I, I really want to be more involved next year in the shaping of the DC section because I realized that there's a lot that I think, there's a lot of um, potential improvements we could be doing. And, and so, just for the sake of time, would you like for me to keep my comments solely to the session or to anything that builds out of that? You turn, Marcus. I would say go, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, so thank you. Uh, so I would say, first of all, I realized yesterday, again, going back to this issue of cohesion, I think that we have a serious communication problem. And that's not something I, I realized until just yesterday that here we are, the, you know, the, the 14 people on stage, of course, some of the DCs weren't on stage, weren't represented on stage, but, some, but I realized that, uh, of course, sometimes there is uh, interaction between uh, different DCs. I mean, uh, I know, for instance, uh, ours was in touch with Niccolo because of the, you know, just the obvious interplay between, you know, uh, journalism and platforms, etc. But it just, it was so obvious yesterday how much interlinkages there were, and yet, you know, there's not a, there wasn't at least, as far as I could have ever seen, clear communication, let's say, on the dynamic coalition list. Again, this doesn't mean it's not happening, it just means that I haven't seen it. Um, you know, let's say one DC saying, hey, we're talking about these issues now, would any of the other DCs be interested in, you know, joining forces on this and talking about this and really making that happen um, together. I think that we need to do, uh, that all of us, again, it's a call to action. It's not a criticism. It's a call to action to really, uh, for us to be more, um, take that proactive approach and, and ensure that we are connecting with one another. Because I, I say all this, you know, kind of bookmarked by the fact that I've heard so much criticism of DCs over the past 
you know, uh, years that I've been involved in IGFs, but at the same time, I also know that, um, you know, and while of course, and, you know, um, all of them act, uh, you know, operate differently and whatnot, we're also working, generally speaking, as volunteers. Nobody holds us, uh, you know, nobody is getting paid to do this work. I mean, we, we do as much as we can with what we have. So, you know, have it. So with that in mind, I think it's really important for us to um, make sure that we are um, doing as much as we can to work cohesively, to communicate to the wider IGF why the work that we're doing is important. I know that the work that we're doing is important because I've been involved with so many of the publications that come out, let's say, of the work that we're doing and, and whatnot. And yesterday, if, like, if people want to ask, well, you know, what are the DCs doing? What is so important? We literally just spent two hours yesterday showcasing how not just one DC, but f at least 14 DCs are really contributing to the entire goal that we're here. So that, I'm just gonna keep my, my points there for now. I'd maybe come in later, but thank you so much for the opportunity to do that yesterday, and, and, I, and thank you for allowing me to speak for so long. Please go ahead. Thank you, Michael. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Sorry, sorry, I was late. Uh, just to expand on what you just said, what is really puzzling me, and, and yesterday when I saw the, the room, such a big room, and it was basically almost empty, and I thought, we receive so much criticism about, you know, all the things we don't do, and here, you know, we're here explaining, we all gathered together, we spent months to organize this session and the room is empty and, and no one came. I mean, they, there's no wheel. On, it shows to me that there's no wheel on the, on the other side to come and listen to us, but there is a will to be critical when they have a space to speak and, you know, somehow I'm not understanding this. You know, we create the space for them to come and listen to us and yet they don't take advantage of the space but they, they do express criticism, you know, during the MAC meetings or whatever, in between the sessions. So I'm, I'm very puzzled by that. I don't know how to handle it, but I, I don't think it's a fair behavior. So, because there, there, there is a responsibility, it also lies with them, you know, if we create the space to come and listen to us, not only us trying to open the space and be more, I don't know, you know, visible. <coughs> Just, just one quick thing, and I mean, both your comments, Michael's comments are great. Um, and I, I, I know we had limited time because we wanted to make sure that everybody had time on the stage last night. But, and I think we were trying to form it in the question of a tweet. But one of the things that I'm uh, flying here, you know, to Berlin and thinking about it, the DCs are doing incredible work. Um, how do we validate that work? That's the question I want to ask, meaning that we're moving to this IGF plus model, potentially. Are there gaps within the UN system or are there channels that we need to go down or explore to say, hey, this DC can help this arm of the UN or it's going to help evangelize something. I just feel that we have to kind of frame it in that way so that we're not here in Poland next year and the year after that, just giving updates to the community to an empty room. So I don't know if we can Think about how we can frame it in that context. Thank you. Can I, I have a question for the other Dynamic Coalitions because um, when it comes to the empty room, I know my members aren't there because that's the only time ever that for us we like have a thing where we sit in a line and talk at them, right? That's not how our Dynamic Coalition operates generally. So even to get my, like our own members in the room, that's just not the right a panel where we like take turns speaking at them, that's not what we do, right? And I wonder if we wouldn't draw a bigger audience if we do what we do. I mean, that assumes you all do the same thing, right? I don't, I don't actually know that. But if, if what we do generally throughout the year is more participatory, then why isn't our session more participatory? Like maybe to give people a sense of what we do, it should look like what we do. I don't know, just a thought. So I wanted to echo, I, I guess we're all sort of in agreement um, in the sense that um, I, what Michael has said, particularly, I actually think some of the best work being done at the IGF is being done by the dynamic coalitions. You know, it's where they all, it's, I look at these different 
if we're fragmented, you look at the different workshops, the different sessions, all doing the little things, and that's important. I'm not suggesting it's not. It has its place, but you need another place where they all come together. And I think that um, there are some things, I'm not, perhaps not as defensive about it. I think there are things we can do better. I think we can learn. Um, I know that, uh, that, and we can learn from each other. I don't, but I think that that's the idea, is we should be fixing these. I don't take the lack of attendance, even by, particularly by Dialyme Coalition members, as a negative sign or lack of support for the dynamic coalition. So if you're in a dynamic coalition for whatever your issue is, whether it's IOT or gender or disability, to ask our members to come to a meeting where one fourteenth of the discussion is gonna be on the issue that is dear to you, and the rest of it's gonna be about general coordination, you're not gonna draw the same sort of response from your members, because many of them are passionately interested in a single aspect. And the general purpose, you know, plenaries is just not going to be as compelling to them. And if there's another session that's more responsive to their specific needs, we're going to lose them. I mean, it's just that simple. Um, I actually found, in many ways, the, the best, in some ways we could use this session for it too, but in a way, the interaction between the 14 of us on the stage was reason enough itself for that to exist. You know, I mean, oddly enough, that was, the, um, in many ways, that was a coordination session in a real sense. Um, I found myself reminded, even though we've been going, what, five years? I keep saying, I need to coordinate better with some of these session, you know, other DCs. Uh, we all need those reminders. It's not uh, uh, the fact that I feel like I need it and some others need it is not necessarily a sign of lack of attention or diligence. But to come together as a community of DCs actually has a lot of value. And I think that um, I found the experience gratifying regardless of how things are going in the room. I also will, can freely confess, uh, there are a number of, um, just because people are, aren't in the room doesn't necessarily mean that they won't experience it. So I, um, I often like watching the sessions that I want to go to online because I can watch it much faster. And um, especially if I'm tired or if I'm networking here with other people, there are other uses of that time, but I do go back and pick up a lot of things that I've missed uh, online. So, I mean, that's the reason we do that. But I do think that um, that session is valuable. I, I do think the DCs are valuable. And my gut tells me I've heard um, less criticism of the DCs in the last year than I've heard in previous years. And so I think that the progress, the appreciation for what they contribute is growing and that uh, understand that, that they're more constructive, uh, they, they, there's a useful, uh, a growing acknowledgement that DCs play a useful role. And that's, I, it may not be, everyone believes that, but that's sort of my experience having led one for five years. I would like to answer to some of the points that were made because I do think um, criticism that we've heard for DCs did not uh, refer to to the main session that DCs usually have. Uh, it was, it's always questioned whether it's a natural right of a DC to have a session within the program uh, without going through the, the whole MAC procedure. So that's always debated, but I don't think it refers to either the main session nor, nor to the content of the sessions that uh, dynamic collisions run throughout uh, the IGF. And those uh, dynamic collision sessions that my schedule allowed me to attend, uh, most of them had a good participation. Uh, people come to the sessions, they are interested in, in the dynamic collisions work, but you're completely right uh, saying, oh, only uh, one fourteenth part of the session is related to the work that I'm doing within the DC. Is it really worth to, to spend two hours there? So that's why I do think uh, if we could follow that path that we had last year, trying to integrate some other multi-stakeholder groups, making them really aware how our work is related to their work, that might attract more people. Um, and then it's not a question of whether it's Thursday afternoon or Wednesday early morning. If, it's, if the content is attractive to many people, then they will come. If, if I may add. <laughs> I mean, when we started this DC coordination, there had been a lot of 
criticism about individual DCs. They did not allow me whatever. And we established some common principles that DCs need to be open, inclusive, bottom up, and have open archives. And I think that is more or less respected. But I just had uh, lunch with someone and said, oh, we were rejected a couple of years back. And one thing we did not address was maybe a proper appeal mechanism. If somebody feels rejected, can you go somewhere, or ombudsman or whatever you want to call it? I mean, in essence, it would be the secretariat. But uh, you know, if people feel they have been treated unfairly, that they can go somewhere else to bring their complaint. But on the whole, I think this kind of complaint has stopped quite a lot. The other thing is, I think they're all very good comments, but I think we need to maybe to dissociate the session itself, whether or not it's well attended. But what I can hear as well is that there is a need for more substantive cooperation between the DCs, between exchanges on substantive issues between the sessions. It's not, and that it's not just about, okay, let's think about organizing the next session, but let's think about how we can actually cooperate in order to make us together stronger and more responsive to needs. And that brings us also back to the IGF plus discussion, I think. Uh, and a lot of the IGF plus ideas is based on the lack of understanding, actually, that the IGF is not quite as bad as some people think it is. It's just maybe not as good at documenting the success stories, but documenting the success stories also is not resource neutral. You need people to write it up, to catch it up, and so on. But we do have, I think, a lot of elements here in the DC cooperation we can feed into the discussion on how to improve the IGF, how to make it more responsive to increasing demands, and uh, you know how to address issues that Christoph mentioned that the UN wants to see addressed. And, hey, here we have a DC on this, we have a DC on that. They may be able to provide answers to your questions, but that we turn our mind a little bit into have more substantive intercessional work. Maybe we can have from time to time a call on one particular issue that is signaled from a dynamic coalition that might be worthwhile, where you would be interested in hearing input from other coalitions. But all these ideas, I think, are very good, and they could really enrich our work. And let's uh, have this kind of discussion and see how we can actually enhance the cooperation between the dynamic coalitions. But I don't want to talk too long. I'm sure there are many others who have. Gunella, please. Yes. OK. Uh, unfortunately, I have, to, I have to go in a couple of minutes, and then I'm going to come back. But uh, um, I, just a few comments. Um, it was really, really useful to be on the panel yesterday. Um, and, um, and I learned a lot uh, from the various DCs. Yes, and, and so that was a, a great starting point. Um, uh, from from my point of view, I mean, our DC on accessibility and disability has been going for many years now, um, but we certainly are planning to um, be more uh, collaborative in future and would be very keen to maybe um, work across a number of DCs so our DCs members could then uh, participate in other DC's activities, like for example, I did today at the DC on IoT and Small Island Developing States, because I happen to be very interested in both those topics. And there could be others um, in our membership who would also work that way. Um, I have a couple of questions. Um, one of them is um, with the governance of, of each DC. Um, we're all volunteers and uh, um, I gather that each of us uh, are maybe, uh, well, 
sponsored might be the wrong word, but uh, we have some type of organisation behind us who, who uh, help us with some resources, be it a mailing list or a website. And I'd be interested to hear the, the different approaches that everyone takes to that. Uh, so I'll, I'll just leave it there for now, and I unfortunately have to dash out. Thank you, Gunela. Well, this is also, I think, an important aspect of this kind of session that we can learn from each other, that we share good practices, you know, what works for one DC. Yes, we do all agree there's no one size fits all, but nevertheless, we may learn from one another. Other comments? Nigel, please. Yes, thank you very much, Marcus. Um, I suppose two or three observations. One, that I mean, I found the session yesterday, you know, very positive. And, you know, as, as has been mentioned, what it, what it did, I mean, whether there was two in the audience or, 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 or 2,000, what, what, what it did, it identified some synergies between the dynamic coalitions. I mean, I, don't, I, mean, I, I think it's over-optimistic to ever think that you're going to get synergy between every dynamic coalition, I mean, but, but clearly what it did identify on, you know, on the media and the regulation and a, and a few other fronts, that there was a, there was a synergy, and I think that was, that was, that was sort of picked up by the, by the audience. So, I mean, that, that's the first point. And I suppose the second is, is, is whether, you, whether you do that sort of session again, uh, and I know we've discussed this on the, on the, on the, on the group and that, whether you try and uh, if you like, shoehorn the the wide variety of, of, of topics that the DCs cover into a into a in, into a, an approach like the sustainable development goals, or whether you divide it up into in, into two or three different areas. Like this morning, for instance, the dynamic coalitions on uh, the IoT and, uh, and internet values met, and that, and there was a synergy there between the two of them and. Uh, uh, that 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 session, you know, I think worked quite well because of the follow-on between the security of IoT and the and the broader internet uh, internet values. Uh, so I think you know we, we we have to re we have to think this again. But I I do think that you know there is value in in the DCs being brought together. Now whether you bring them together in a public area or whether you bring them together in a private area is different and and just the last point i mean uh, is is that the individual sessions that the D, i haven't been to them all but they've been incredibly well attended and very positive and so i think you know that obviously will be reported back to the mag I mean, yeah. uh, thanks uh, stuart hamilton from the dynamic coalition on, on public access in libraries um I don't have much to add because the comments have really covered the way I looked at the session, but I reiterate that I did find it very positive to hear what everybody else was, was working on because it did give, by the end of the session when we were all dispersing, exchanging cars and deciding that we could work together next year on X. So I think that was, that was very positive. I do think something as simple as a smaller room will generate much more um, positive feeling. It's psychological. You're in that massive space. If there's only 30 people in there, it looks like nobody. So something as simple, so I would agree with the, the comments about the way we actually approach the session in terms of the physical setting and the degree of interaction. I'm, I'm definitely in agreement with that. Um, but as a participant, it was a, it was a good experience, and I think it was, uh, it was, it was um, rewarding or, or, or you know, it gave me lots of ideas about what we can do next year. Thank you. This echoes also a little bit my first reaction whether it would not have been better in a smaller room where you actually can see each other. Uh, we had asked for the main session mainly also because you get automatic interpretation in all UN languages, which is obviously added value. So if you look at it in the archive of video, but then on the other hand, it loses maybe the interaction would have been maybe more positive in a smaller setting. So this is something to be considered in terms of when we go forward to next year's meeting. But I, I really think what I heard from you is there was value in the session as such and in, there is value in the cooperation between in the exchange of views between the dynamic coalitions. And uh, I like the idea that it was 
first made a suggestion by Michael to actually have that throughout the year through, as an intercessional process that we didn't don't maybe dissociate the focus of the next session from the cooperation, that the cooperation as such between the DCs may well be more important than just planning next year's session. That's a little bit my takeaway. But uh, Other comments? Yes, Christopher. A very small dissenting voice on the venue. I like the big venue. Um, I like the fact that it's simultaneously translated into all available languages for archival purposes, because I think many people will access it that way. What you lose in terms of interaction, we're not going to get much interaction among 14 people beyond what we get now. I mean, if, if that many speakers in that amount of time, Tatiana and Michael were masterful at pushing us along, but the idea that you'll get the same sort of engagement you'll see in a room like this in a more conventional workshop, I don't think it's worth sacrificing the other things to gain that because I don't think the gain is there. And there's a certain legitimacy and certain, I don't know, circumstance, a pomp to doing it in the main room. And um, I've always thought that, that we have our sessions individually in rooms like this. And I think that that serves a useful function. Uh, and so I kind of like it the way it was, the way it is now, but I would of course defer to everyone else if I'm not the only one, if I'm the only one that feels that way. Um, valid points, and definitely the interpretation is a legitimate point, but Jutta has to. I, I couldn't agree more with you, Christopher, because I do think it's an acknowledgement of, of all the efforts that are put into uh, the work of the dynamic coalitions when we go into the great room and when we have the interpretation. And it, it's also like it could then be more inviting for people not only to join that session, but to engage in dynamic coalitions work when they learn in all these languages about the work. So I prefer to leave it as it is. So can I just say from the original comment, I was, didn't mean to say the room size, although maybe that has to do with how much interaction you can have, but I really mean to say that there is at no point in the year except for that session does our group, the Dynamic Coalition, do a thing where we like take turns reading a script, right? They're like we just don't do that. And so it just feels odd and a little forced at the main session for me in particular, for any of our members to get, you know, to sit in that spot and answer pre-planned questions in a pre-planned way, the way that like the rest of the IGF does, because that's just not what we do. And so the question was really whether there is a way to structure the session to reflect more like what we actually do. And maybe the answer is no, because we want the pomp and circumstance of it all or whatever. But I think that that actually keeps my members from not coming, right? So if I ask them, are you coming to the main session? They'll say no, because A, the 14th, 114th of a thing or whatever. And then B, like, we know what you're going to say because, you know, we helped you prepare it or whatever, right? Um, so, so why would we? But um, so that, that was, to be clear, more the thrust of the comment um, but rather than the pomp and circumstance piece. And I, I agree with the translation. I think that that's important. So um, I have um, a few different points to make, but for, let's just start with this because Carla, I think that, I think there's a, I'm glad you're raising this point, and Christopher, I'm glad you're raising kind of a counterpoint. I think I think one of the issues is that we maybe we don't have this kind of robust discussion enough, and uh, you know, uh, I for instance on the we attend the I attend the calls, and maybe not much is said, or like often you know Marcus and Yuta, you're kind of pushing it along, um, you know, but um, I. I don't know how to say this in a more diplomatic way, but it's just, again, call to action. I think we, all of us, just need to, as much as we can, um, really encourage um, ourselves as our, the coordinators or our members to, to make sure that we're having these discussions. And if they're not on the calls, then they're, make sure that we're doing it over the mailing list, because I think sometimes we don't do that enough. So that's one. Um, two, the format. I was, it's funny because I was, was going to suggest that um, now that I've had this experience that maybe we keep the format consistent. I think maybe uh, one of the issues was ex uh, expectations. Uh, you know, so if we know what to expect next year, we can plan better for it, that sort of thing. Um, of course, because I want to say, and Marcus and Yuta, you can speak to this more widely. The past few years, we, we seem to have been like 
all uh, like vacillating between different forms of the DC session. Sometimes it's, I think once it was like in, in Geneva maybe, it was, about, it was kind of like this, and then the year after it was like, well, why don't we just focus on one specific policy question? And so I think no matter what, I, although flexibility is good, I think it's, it's we, we stay um, consistent. Minda approached me yesterday, and, and I'm sorry to, to, to you know, call you out, I don't mean in that way, as saying like, you know, we've been working a lot on climate change, so in climate action, why did you focus on refugees and migrants? Which, fair enough, you know, and um, that's something that, and, you know, that's something that for me, I didn't realize that um, even though I was obviously involved with it, you know, we, we took from the papers themselves and maybe I wasn't critical enough about that as trying to say, well, what are we trying to get here? So I think consistency, making sure our expectations are clear. In terms of advocating for the DCs themselves, I think that we should be, um, we should, you know, have to be our biggest advocates for this work, um, period. But aside from that, and I'm, so, I don't know, who, um, just, looking around the room other than Utah, I don't know who's on the MAG, but I think we really need to have much, much more MAG support as, as much as possible. Um, you know, that's something that strikes me. Um, and then lastly, I think uh, we have to really make sure that we are communicating clearly what we want. What we want from our DC members as well as what we want from each other and what we want from an audience. That's I was just going to ask Avri because she was my co-facilitator to begin with. <laughs> she would like to jump in, and as she has asked her, yeah, please. Yeah, thanks, um, Avri Doria. Um, now, first of all, I have to say that I did not participate in the Common One, nor did the uh, the Dynamic Coalition I'm part of, and I don't regret that at all because I looked at what was being put together and said, "Gee." doesn't really relate to what we're doing. That's fine, you know, I'm not gonna worry about it. Um, so I don't really, and perhaps it's just being ignorant, but I really don't understand your, your, your call for action. I think that compared to where DCs were two years, three years, five, you know, however many years ago, they're really doing well. I don't think they need to be uniform. I don't think there needs to be consistency that each year's program has to be the same format. In fact, I was really shocked that you went kind of for the same program again, because it seemed like, you know, you kind of got stuck in a rut. Uh, and I didn't understand why you were doing it again, but that was okay. Since I wasn't gonna participate, it didn't matter. Um, I, 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 so I actually thought things were going fairly well that each of the DCs is working. By the way, I totally agree on the people talking about the big room. Even if you can't fill it, it's the right place to be. Although it was unfortunate that the TV broadcast from there didn't seem to be working quite as well as it could have because I know I wanted to watch it from elsewhere because I couldn't be there. But, but anyhow, so I really don't understand, and it's probably my ignorance, um, <clears throat> what is wrong and what call to action is really needed. So perhaps you're being too diplomatic for my slow brain. Would you like to respond, Michael? Sure. I, to, to me, I'll, sorry, Michael Ogia. Um, when I say call to action, it's more of like positive encouragement, I suppose. Like, it's not, not to say that something isn't happening or doesn't need to happen. It's more of like, let's continue to support that positive element. Maybe that's still being overly diplomatic. It's just more of like, uh, it's not criticism necessarily. It's more of saying, look, there's opportunity here to continue to do, po you know, positive, to take positive uh, uh, measures to make sure that we are continuing to support uh, each other. That's what I meant. It's also how I understood it, that it was more a call for, well, I think I interpreted it as substantive cooperation throughout the year, that you actually, up to now, we have, only discuss procedural issues. Should we have, there was, for instance, the frustration that some dynamic coalitions were only given a 60 minute slot, was it in Geneva or in Paris, that sort of thing, that we really say, no, you need 90 minutes. But you also defend the slot that the dynamic coalition that has done its work gets automatically gets a 90 minute slot. So we discuss that sort of thing and then. Uh, to ask for a main session and how to prepare the main session that we never discussed on substantive issues. If there is 
is there anything we have to add on climate change, for instance? So we never had this kind of discussion. And that clearly would be a step forward that one dynamic coalition signals an issue, would like to have input from other dynamic coalitions, or the accessibility and disability dynamic coalition already signals we might be interested. It's clearly a horizontal issue. They may signal to other dynamic coalitions what's important to them. Have you considered this? Have you considered that? And, and that's, I think, a very valid function. So that's the way how I interpreted it. But yes, Stuart. Um, I suppose I would go back then to, I mean, some of the thinking I've just had as the conversation sort of stemmed from the idea that maybe our problem was that, that people weren't coming. And um, actually, I'm beginning to ask myself if that what is the actual problem that we're sort of trying to solve here? What's, what's the objective of the session? Um, because that to me, because, because then the big room is fine in some respects, and it seems to me that everybody who participated was actually quite happy with the participation. So we, got, we all got something out of it. Um, is the problem we're trying to solve to get more people to come? Um, because then we might need to ask ourselves, and maybe this has already been done, um, why, are, why aren't people coming? Have we actually asked them? Avery didn't come. You've obviously said it wasn't for you, for you. so you know that wasn't working even for, for one of our own. But do we know why people go to other sessions over this one? Have we asked? All the relevant questions, but I think, uh, you know, they're always buzzwords every year. This year is more artificial intelligence, then people go to that. Or last year, maybe IoT, whatever. But the dynamic coalitions, it's a big roof that has to cover everything. So by definition, the title of the session is not sufficiently sexy to attract the masses. But Can, can we camouflage it somehow? Uh, well, there is that. I mean, how can we make it more attractive? Uh, but. I also can hear you, I mean, I think there is value in the session as such. I think around the table there is consensus on that. And being in the main session documents that in all UN languages, which again is a value even if people are not in the room because it's archived and you can read it up. So, you know, you can send it to colleagues who maybe are not that fluent in English, but prefer it in, in Spanish. Yeah, and actually, for, for the record, I think I understand now, certainly the big room brings that, that's a very valuable. So there is that, but I think, uh, and also what is the problem we're trying to solve is uh, how to be relevant and remain relevant, and also in the discussions going forward, we don't know where they're heading on uh, IGF+. Plus. But I think as dynamic coalitions, we should not just wait, but we should be maybe more proactive in making a contribution, how we can actually uh, make a contribution to enhancing the efficiency of the IGF and also documenting the impact. And I can tell... No, yeah, please. Uh, thank you. Um, for your question. My name is Nadia Czechia. I represent the Youth Coalition on Internet Governance. I apologize for being late. My session was uh, still running, so that's why I'm joining the conversation just now. Um, in regards to your question about uh, why, uh, in particular, my, uh, my target audience isn't turning up, uh, we have a WhatsApp group, and there are some people who sit in the back, and they report back whether or not the topic is too complex to understand, because the dynamic coalitions, uh, at some point, is not really an entry point for beginners, uh, they feel. It's more for people who've already been working uh, and developing uh, projects, and, and so it's our target audience seems to be more people who are already in organizations and working in businesses. So uh, in, in that regard, they then don't turn up because the, the language is then becoming too difficult and the projects they are, are not really involved with. And I think this reflects back to a conversation that we had last year about uh, target audiences. If I recall correctly, we mentioned that um, that uh, if we are doing intercollaborational work between dynamic coalitions, we usually address that in our own sessions. So when we have it in our own sessions, we then talk about, oh, we were working with this, co this dynamic coalition and we produced this paper, or it, it happens through, you know, NRIs or um, the BF, B, 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 Best Practice. Yeah, Best Practice Forums. I can't remember which way it goes around. 
Um, so then I, I feel then that when it comes to collaboration, collaboration between dynamic coalitions, those get then more attention during those sessions. Uh, for for why I think it's important to sit with you because for us to to remember and acknowledge that we are there that youth are participants and that we are contributing to the process is for extreme for us extremely important and uh, and I, therefore I also apologize for not being in the calls there seems to be a miscommunication who's sitting on calls nowadays for the for the session but it is important for us to know and, and see what you're doing because um, everything that you tell us we bring back to our communities and say hey they are developing this do you want to go to back to your organization where you're doing your internship so that we can connect them together. So this is why for us it is important that this further develops because we then understand better um, what you're doing for the, for the people who do understand what you're doing. Um, but then for, for, for the newcomers and for the really young, for, for them this is too difficult. But thank you for your question. Uh, I may, may I add something to that because we also had a debate during the MAC sessions that there were even MAC members out there that don't understand what a dynamic coalition is. So it's, it seems not only to refer to, to the group that you are representing, but also to other people coming to, to the IGF. And even those that are very close to the IGF ecosystem sometimes don't understand. We, we had to explain that dynamic coalitions do so-called intersessional work that it's not only having one meeting uh, uh, at, the, at the Internet Governance Forum at the end of the year, but that it's work that is done throughout the year. And uh, as far as I know, it was a successful attempt for this year to bring parliamentarians from all around the world to the Internet Governance Forum. I just attended that session and it was, had lots of participants there. But I'm pretty sure that none of the parliamentarians had ever heard the term dynamic collision, nor understood what it really means. Uh, uh, in preparation of the Internet Governance Forum in Germany, we had several like information meetings explaining people what is the Internet Governance Forum, how can you bring in your own resources to that. And when I had the time and opportunity to explain a dynamic collision is something that you can start right away, work with a group from, with people from around the world on an issue that is, really goes to your heart, that is important for you, everybody was excited. But still it takes then some time to, to, to understand and to really approach dynamic collisions to know whom to turn to when you're working with people with disabilities, for example, or when you come from journalism or so on. It, so I know it's all in the Internet Governance website, but it's difficult for people to access the information and to really understand what they can do to bring in their own resources in our work. It's, it may continue. It is also quite an unusual construct, the dynamic coalitions. Normally, working groups of an organization are chartered by some supreme body of the organization, but the dynamic coalition are self-constituted, they're bottom-up, and they're autonomous. And this creates maybe a natural tension between the MAG. The MAG is appointed to design the program of the annual meeting, and then, hey, the MAG members learn there's a whole portion of the program that is outside our remit. We cannot say we have nothing to do with them. And I heard when we started this co collaboration between the Dynamic Coalition, I heard comments from some MAG members that they get automatically pr uh, prime real estate, giving slots, whereas others have to fight for it. That is the workshops. And the workshops, they get chosen, selected by the MAG members. So that is a a natural, uh, I think, tension. And as Jutta said, it's also quite difficult to understand this autonomous uh, nature of the dynamic coalitions. Yes, please, both of you, ladies first. Uh, thank you very much, um, Nadia, again from YSIC. Um, I don't know if you are aware, but the on, on, the, on the first day, there's an IGF for newbie session, and a lot of people, we encouraged them to attend. There was no one there in terms of not people who wanted to know more, but there was no one presenting anything. And people were shocked. They sat there for an hour, and then they left to go to other sessions, and a, a lot of young people were upset. 
And uh, one thing that uh, the Y succession this year decided is that they would like to work together with the MAG so that we would be co-hosting this, but then in relation to this conversation, perhaps also someone from the dynamic coalitions could attend the IGF for, for newbie session and explain what are dynamic coalitions and then encourage them to a attend the dynamic coalition sessions re related to the area of topics that they themselves are specialized in and say, come to our community because we can be the community that, that can foster your development at the IGF. And uh, uh, if this is a possibility that I can open to the floor to the dynamic coalitions and we can work with the MAC on this, I would really appreciate that. And then um, if, I, if you don't mind, um, a second uh, contribution is that if we are not sure still about what we're going to do for the IGF, uh, next year regarding the, the, the main plenary session. We could do a tryout session maybe if, if, if people want to. We can try it out at Eurodic, which is in June. Then we can try out doing a dynamic coalition session there and, and see if, if the development of how we want to do this main session works there or does not work there. And then it, it sounds maybe a little cruel to Sandra to say it as a trial session, but I think it would be a great opportunity for us to come together more often so that we feel more comfortable rather than having this once a year session and then it, it's the ultimate. It's always the ultimate and if we have, okay, now I'm babbling. I, I hope people understand what I mean. Thank you. Thank you. I think Nicolo, you were first. Yes. Okay. Thank you. So Nicolo from the Dynamic Coalition Platform Responsibility, uh, but I also want to um, represent in this instance the dynamic coalition network neutrality and uh, community connectivity. So um, I think one uh, issue that has come up is the need to kind of fit with, um, together with the main team and what is of interest to everyone. And, uh, this is one issue that has come up. The other one is uh, we would like to uh, have this as participatory as possible. This was one of the comments made earlier. So. What we have done over the past few years is always try to have uh, inputs from our members in order to create uh, first a call for papers or call for inputs and then uh, represent the collective work together at our session. So couldn't we have maybe also something similar in the context of Dynamic Coalition where we have I know that we, we try to make it uh, like uh, um, as par participatory, as inclusive as possible by having the SDGs which are uh, basically fitting with the goals of various dynamic coalitions. But uh, another innovation of this uh, year's session was uh, dividing the work in four different streams, I think. Uh, so perhaps uh, we could have a call for uh, papers, call for proposal that kind of highlights the work of dif different streams. And we don't need to have all 14 because that's uh, just very dispersive and a few of us, you know, were not able to perhaps uh, understand all the nuances of the conversation and he would allow, uh, if we ma made a more specific focus of a session, we would uh, encourage our members to participate because they would actually uh, be more closely um, uh, uh, more close to the topic of the conversation and they would be more able to uh, kind of bring uh, their inputs, their questions. So I, I'm just thinking perhaps we could have, uh, you know, every year a couple of uh, tracks represented and not all necessarily. Uh, but I know this is a very disruptive uh, idea that goes against the uh, coordination and inclusion of all coalitions, but we also have decentralized uh, coordination, which is another way to go about this, and it's not about imposing what the, the team is, but letting the dynamic coalition decide and maybe bringing this together with the general team of the IGF uh, every year. That's a suggestion. Michael was next. Yes, C could we perhaps um, um, have a secured slot where we could have like a proposal that different dynamic coalition would submit together, like a co-submission? Not necessarily 100%, as you said, not all of us together, but we would know in anticipation that, you know, if we identify a cross-cutting team that we would like to work on together, like three or four of us could co-submit a, a proposal that it would be, I don't know how to call it, but sort of a you know, multiple dynamic coalition slots or whatever. 
that could be an option. Thematic session, I'm saying. Yes, and if I may add something to that, it would be useful if uh, the deadline for that was a little bit later than the workshops, because uh, we are busy also putting together the proposal for the workshop, so it would be helpful if we had a devoted uh, session for dynamic collision proposals with the deadline slightly later. Yeah. I don't think that's an either or, so uh, we... Of course, we, we could still have the, the dynamic collisions main session that wouldn't hinder any dynamic collision, for example, like uh, dynamic collision on Internet of Things and dynamic collision on child online safety somehow cooperated, I do think, two or three years ago when they had a, a session, which was, of course, the session of the dynamic collision on child online safety, but Internet of Things was brought into that. So I do think... Of course, if there are uh, it's work that is related to each other, then you could propose to have a workshop or a session which will go through the MAC procedure. It would not then be guaranteed that the workshop proposal goes through, but uh, still that would not mean that we should not have the main session with having trying to, to have as many uh, dynamic collisions as possible in one session, uh, because I do think the idea was also to explain a little bit more what is a dynamic collision and what work do they do within, uh, within the main session. And we still see that many people have not understood, so I, I do see the need to, to continue with that, making clear what is dynamic collision work. Minda? Thank you, Minda from Internet uh, Rights and Principles Coalition. Um, first, I, I, I wanted to join everyone else to say thank you for, for yesterday. Uh, moderation was great. Uh, the conversation was great. Obviously, it was not well uh, attended, but I think it comes to the points that were discussed already. So, uh, too many topics involved, too big discussion, very deep as well in the themes that uh, most people are not into and if they go for the first time and sit there for two hours probably is a little bit too much to take. Uh, in. So um, yesterday I, I, at, the, at the end of the meeting I suggested that uh, we possibly could work together on something that is urgent and uh, my call was for climate action because it's not something widely discussed at the IGF and these uh, uh, for instance, could bring everyone together into uh, discussing something very specific with the input of everyone. So connecting the, ne the next billion, how are we going to do it in a sustainable way? So or how do the impacts of fundamental rights, so that would come from me. So uh, it doesn't have to be climate action. I would uh, possibly go for something like that because it's uh, something that we are uh, deeply caring about at the moment and working on. Um, it was good, by the way, that we talked about refugees rather than uh, my uh, climate action plan. <laughs> Uh, because refugees was another topic that you wanted to bring to the IGF and unfortunately it was not accepted, so it was really good to mention there. Um, so my, my main point about bringing people to the session is communication, uh, having more time to discuss what we want to do at this main session together, working collaboratively. So I think what happened this year is we worked very well at the fir in the first few months and uh, we were good at discussing things and then as the time uh, approached, the IG as we approached the IGF, it kind of died off and it was a little bit of confusion because at least on my hand, I'm also busy preparing other things, I was not exactly sure how the session would be. Uh, and, uh, and I think if you just keep the communication going, if you are all uh, in the same boat and we know what we are doing, we can also approach our communities, we can also communicate with everyone what's happening, we can bring more people together. But I think we need to concentrate on something that includes us all rather than to discuss too many topics in one session because uh, I think that's how we don't get people in the room. Thank you. Maybe you first, you haven't talked yet, please. 
thank you, uh, Chair. Thank you for the opportunity. This is Mohammad Shibi Rawan from Pakistan, and I am the President of Internet Society Accessibility Special Interest Group. Uh, please forgive me uh, for asking very basic level question and also pardon my ignorance as well. Uh, I've been listening to uh, very thoughtful points and ideas emerging here. Uh, but what I would like to ask that uh, on the, on the uh, IGF page, on the UN page, uh, Dynamic Collations page, uh, there is a way that we, uh, how to formulate or how to form a, a dynamic collation. Uh, then there are some objectives and purposes as well uh, listed there, uh, but uh, I did not see for one that how these, the, how the work of these dynamic collations is evaluated and how these, uh, once a dynamic collation is formed, how this uh, collation would be governed in the future. So please, uh, if someone could enlighten me on, on that topic and perhaps we can uh, uh, so there are like I know uh, 18 or 19 dynamic relations so far. So uh, one, I would be interested in, in knowing something about the evaluation that how the work of the uh, IGF uh, dynamic relations is, is evaluated and if there is a criterion or something like that. And second, uh, about the governance that if once if it is formed and once a coordinator is designated, so, so how uh, this uh, this changes, or if there are something like that, some some modalities or some work like that. So, I would I would invite your comment. Thank you. Well, the answer is uh, essentially none to all your questions. There's no evaluation as such. The secretariat just checks <coughs> whether a coalition exists and fulfills some basic criteria that is, files an annual report, whether it has a mailing list that is active, but there's no substantive evaluation of the dynamic coalition. And as to the governance, they all subscribe to some basic principles, that they have to be open, they need to have open mailing lists, and they need to have open archives. If they abide by these basic criteria, then they are listed as dynamic coalitions. And how they organize themselves, whether they have one chair or multiple co-chairs, that's up to them to decide. So it's a very light process, it's very autonomous, and that's why also we started sitting together at one table to discuss how best to make sure that there is a certain coherence between them, that not one dynamic coalition does this and the other one does that, but that there are some very basic parameters. And we can, of course, change this if we all agree, but I think there was also a strong feeling among the dynamic coalition, there's no one size fits all. We have different nature, different issues, different dynamics, but we can agree on some basic uh, principles. And what I did mention right at the beginning is one thing we never discussed, do we have a kind of appeal mechanism if somebody feels dissatisfied with a dynamic coalition? The logical one would be the secretariat, because the secretariat is, uh, keeps the archives of the dynamic coalition, lists them, and at one point, I think that it listed also inactive dynamic coalitions that were dynamic coalitions that had not filed an annual report. And they are not given a slot at the meeting. That's, you need to be an active dynamic coalition if you want the slot at the meeting. But up to now, you have automatically been given a slot. But again, the ultimate arbiter, it will be the MAG, because the MAG has the responsibility for the IGF program. So, yes, we can say, we can discuss what kind of main session we want, but we will have to make the proposal to the MAG, and it is the MAG that decides. So, there, the lack of participation in the room may be a criteria used by some MAG members saying that nobody came to your session, but there we have also the arguments that were made by many people in the room saying there was a value in itself and it's documented. But this is all very helpful. I mean, Utah will be the one who has to take 
all this to the new MAG and convince the MAG colleagues of the value. I don't know, would you like to add a few words on that? I, I, I do think you phrased that very well. It's, in that case, it has to go through the MAG decision process and we will bring that forward. I do think Marcus had, has done a wonderful job for uh, always reminding the MAC how useful the work of the dynamic coalitions is and that it needs to be rewarded also with the space in the program and so on and so on. So we will continue to do so and will bring forward these suggestions to the MAC. And also one argument we always have to make is a session of a dynamic coalition is not like a workshop as such. It's more a, an AGM of the dynamic coalition. It's the mm -hmm. only time where the dynamic coalition members actually meet face to face. So they <coughs> need their time. But Christopher, you wanted to react. So I wanted to sort of reinforce something Jutta said about the use of the main session. And I understand Niccolo and some of the desire to make it narrower. I don't think it's either or. Uh, as you just said, we can propose individual workshops, but actually, as was mentioned at the main session, we incorporated, I'm sorry, I should, Christopher Yu, Dynamic Coalition for Innovative Approaches to Connecting the Unconnected. They mentioned that we actually incorporated other dynamic coalitions into our dynamic coalition session to bring in those perspectives, which doesn't have to go through the workshop process, but as a way to carry that kind of work through. And if that makes sense for certain coalitions, I think that is an avenue that's open to you. And to me, to the extent to which there are clusters that have common interests, those are the better avenues. What struck me about this session was the breadth of things represented in the 18 dynamic coalitions. And that was an important recognition for me. Um, I would like to think that I can keep track of 18 things, but it's just simply not true. I mean, just to keep up current with what everyone's doing um, was not, is not possible. And the fact that I did not know we had a new dynamic coalition on blockchain. And I have to admit that I have some work on blockchain, very remote from that, but the idea that that would coordinate with the connecting the unconnected, it's not natural. I mean, I'm, I'm interested, but that was my moment to realize the breadth of what's going on. And when my other work comes up where I do find chances to plug in things that don't tie in directly, you would we would lose that if we picked a handful of smaller themes for the big session, because by definition, we would accent certain things at the trade-off of losing the breadth and appreciation for the breadth of what's going on. And my gut tells me that my opinion is if there is a tremendous need for that other coalescent sort of smaller group events, but there are other avenues for that, this is really the only place where we can be, really understand the full breadth of what's going on across all 18. And I personally think that the trade-off, we would lose something by moving it to becoming more specialized. And I would encourage us to think more broadly about proposing workshops or structuring our own dynamic coalition sessions to bring that in, because there's an opportunity where we can make it, as Yuta said so beautifully, it's not an either or choice, we can actually do both. Michael Ogia, Dynamic Coalition on Sustainability of uh, Journalism and News Media. I, I really can't agree more with, with what Christopher said. I mean, the fact is, if, if we want, want in-depth um, analysis, we can do that in our individual sessions. And if, but where else do we make those connections? I think that's something that's missing. Um, I think uh, when it comes, this is kind of why I wanted to highlight the format of this event as well. I mean, also, we, we've been, planning this for months and you know I think often times I sometimes feel like Utah and Marcus you're just kind of like okay what, what do you want to do what do we want to do and you're trying to get feedback you're trying to get feedback and it's crickets so you know we need to take a more proactive approach at saying what we want what we don't want um, what works what doesn't work that's one um, as you mentioned, there's clear accountability ability mechanisms, but are they enforced? That's something we can be working on as well, because the way that I see it is that if, you know, we all have to make, keep ourselves accountable too. I mean, if we're, if, um, if one DC is not kind of pulling their weight, it brings us all down, even if another is doing way more than they need to be doing. So it's, there's definitely an element of self-reflection in all of that as well, but 
Having said all that as well, I'm, I mean, for me, Utah, the fact that like MAG members don't know what the dynamic coalitions are doing, that is unacceptable to me, that we are such a major part of this program and they don't know. I understand that the people have a problem with the fact that, you know, we just automatically get a session, which, by the way, is not true and that's clear on the website. You have to have been doing work and dem dem doing demonstrable work throughout the year and that, that you come together and is... Uh, Marcus said, has, have something like an, uh, an annual general meeting. I always call dynamic uh, coalition work an iceberg. That's what intersessional programming is. You see the little bit of it that's done for an hour, hour and a half, two hours at the session, at, you know, at the event itself, but then the rest of the work is, goes unseen. So maybe that's one of the problems, and going back to the point that I raised about communication that others have echoed in their comments as well. We need to do a better job at uh, communicating with each other, um, educating the rest of the, of the populate, of, you know, the rest of the IGF community. I don't know how we can communicate that as a group to the MAG. I'm sorry, but I'm very, I'm very like irritated about that. I mean, um, you know, so so I don't know. We we can take, for instance, some of the some of the documents that we had created for this that Tatiana and I and Marcus and Yuta had created. We can turn that into a fact sheet. Maybe how the DCs are can are you know can are um, contributing to the SDGs. Maybe that's something that could be like a two pager or something. If people don't read that, maybe we can do a webinar. If that doesn't work, I'm open to suggestions. Uh I know Yuta wants to jump in, but allow me also first to comment. The, it's all true what you said. Dynamic coalitions, they have to prove that they are given a slot through the work they have done. But what it means automatically, it's not up to the MAC to decide. It's up to the Secretariat to check the boxes. Have they done the report? Yes, tick the boxes, and then you are given a slot. But the MAC is out of the equation, and that creates frustration, I think, among some MAG members that here they are given prime real estate and others have to give a proposal and we then decide yes or no. But Jutta wanted to discuss. Yeah, I just wanted to ask you to be a bit sympathetic uh, with new MAG members because they are not uh, um, nominated because they know everything about the Internet Governance Forum and it's like best practice forums and dynamic coalitions and so on. They are nominated due to their individual personal expertise in special areas and for representing a certain stakeholder group. And of course, if you're new to the whole thing, then you need to learn and to understand and probably we can also have... I would suggest that at the first meeting of the new MEC, uh, um, in the next year that we explain a little bit more to the new ones what these formats are and what they stand for. But just, I understand you're <laughs> upset, but maybe I haven't phrased that very well, but it's, uh, it's only a minority and if someone doesn't know from the beginning, I do think it's understandable. And of course we can do better in documenting what yeah. it is. Okay. Yes, please. Now we have lots of uh, people. Yeah, okay. Um, I'm actually, I, I'll ask myself, I'm an incoming MAG member. And, and so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I didn't need the applause, thank you. Um, so I'm listening and I'm learning. And, uh, and it's, it's, I mean, there's, there's a lot of. Um, um, frustration I can hear and, uh, and also talking about ways that uh, MAG members can learn more about dynamic coalitions. <coughs> I am uh, from a dynamic coalition and, and so uh, within one, one particular DC we, we have particular issues in that, that we're trying to um, address and and so uh, hearing what everyone else says um, is certainly something um, you know I can share formally and informally um, with the mag when I start getting involved a little bit and understanding 
a bit more about how the MAG operates. Um, so having said that, um, I also wanted to ask, um, we've been talking, and, and I'm sorry I had to leave a room, I had to meet with a parliamentarian actually, and, and, and so um, we know that the um, uh, HDC has, has a session um, allocated to them. I'm wondering how many um, DCs actually work together to put in proposals for workshops uh, currently. Is it most or is it done mainly through your membership that some of your membership might propose a workshop? I, I'm just wondering what the mechanisms are there. It's, it's true. So I uh, also to clarify my earlier point. I think we are all really busy with uh, our own dynamic collision to build, you know, an annual output uh, as well as putting in uh, workshop proposals that are separate from the coalition themselves. So what I was suggesting earlier is to have an additional incentive, an additional channel for us to propose something together that would allow us to produce something um, intersessionally between us to have a dialogue. And also I think the, the session itself will be a very good opportunity to exchange substantive ideas because one thing is to have a 90-minute session or two-hour session with uh, 15 speakers. Another one is to have maybe two or three coalitions having a, a much more um, substantive exchange. Thank you for explaining. That this is actually fairly close to what the NRIs do. They also have thematic sessions apart from an overall session. So this is definitely something worth exploring. But we are reaching sort of have 10 minutes left. We have to think about wrapping up. There are a few people who, there was Nigel, Nigel Nick, uh, and Christopher. Nigel first. Just, just, just very brief, these points have been made. It is, I mean, surely at the first MAG meeting in the new term, there has to be some alignment of what the overall program consists of. Because if, if, if MAG members, new MAG members, go straight into the, the really hard work, and I recognize that, of, of choosing workshops, and are not familiar with the, the best practice forums and the dynamic coalitions and, and the wider aspects of the Internet Governance Forum, then, then it, it's very difficult for them. So there has to be something at that first session, I would have thought. Uh, yeah, Nick Smith from uh, the DC DNSI. Um, I just want to build on what everybody said so far. So one of the, the luxuries that um, our DC had, and I know, Michael, we actually met in Geneva when you were announcing uh, the start of your DC. I mean, it goes to kind of what everybody's been saying. Is, it, is there any appetite, and if so, is there any feasibility where we can just stop talking about it and just like do some type of DC session for the MAG, whether it's in January, I know the next one's in April, where we get an email list together, these are the topics, this is what's going on, um, because to your point, I mean, it is a crash course for new MAG members, right? Um, but this year I was at every MAG meeting and um, our DC presented at every MAG meeting about what we're doing. It was kind of a check-in point where we are and where we're gonna be going towards November. So I know I'm just wondering if we can do something collaboratively, one, to help the MAG understand what we're all about, and two, as they're thinking about the schedule and you know the logistics of everything, also help us as well too, so we know where we're going. Just something to think about it and yeah, thank you. So in answer to the specific question about how we coordinate with one another, um, you know, it's some of, much of it's informal, but for example, I'm sorry, Christopher Yu, Dynamic Coalition for Innovative Approaches to Connecting the Unconnected. Uh, for the last three years, the MAG had authorized a major initiative on connecting and enabling the next billions. And uh, one of the things we did is, along with the Internet Society, our DC wrote the documents court, and put out the calls. Some of it, the, it happened that way and pulled that all together. And what something that happened immediately before this meeting is someone from the DC on public access and libraries approached me about joining with the, doing the dynamic coalition uh, DC3 on connecting communities about reviving CENB. You know, under some ages, whether it's a formal initiative under the MAG or something we would just do together. And this is an example where I think the community networking community, the public access community, and our community, our DCs overlap really well. And there's something we can do there. And so this is, you know, and we don't know exactly how this is going to happen. It could be a revival of CENB for a fourth year. 
after a year hiatus, or it could be something we just do autonomously as a separate group that leads to workshop proposals. And, and I think that Marcus is really signaling what is, is to be openly experimental about this, because this may work for this particular combination, but it, uh, it's going to work out very differently for different ones. And so sort of giving us the venues to coordinate and uh, to, to ideate and brainstorm about these possibilities is really beneficial. But I think, you know, what Marcus is saying is that we also, the other thing extreme is you want to avoid being prescriptive because forcing people, it reminds me of when you set up mentorship programs and force people to work together. They don't, sometimes they gel, sometimes they don't. You know, it's just, and it's just a question somewhat of interests and person, just on, and it could be that yeah, not this year because that particular DC has a different set of priorities, all of which are fine. But we're all volunteers, but we're, we have enough common ground and what really is striking to me is um, how much positive energy there is around the DCs right now, having been through this. You know, I know we had a lot of pressure the last time around. When you cut the whole IGF from four days down to three days, I, I think people didn't handle that very well. Everyone's going to take a cut in time. I'm sorry, I just never understood this. I, I thought that was a, a mistake to get distracted by the fact that everyone wanted more time in, in Paris. Um, the more fo I think we're now in a better place, which is we're focusing on the real question is, do the DCs contribute something substantively? And particularly when you're talking about the themes that I see in the IGF Plus about intercessional work, policy relevant recommendations, all that. To me, the dynamic coalitions are the, are the best source, and that to me is a, the best prospect of the kinds of benefits that has leading to the discourse around IGF Plus, not the part of, and potentially in bringing in other constituencies as well because I think that uh, we're actually very well positioned to make a po we have contributed in a positive way to that, and I think that we can continue to do so. I, I just um, briefly want to comment on a couple things. So one, I heard someone say that the DCs don't meet during the year. We actually do, uh, at least once a quarter. Uh, members meet face-to-face -face, uh, during the year. And so I want to just open it up and say if any of members of any of the other dynamic coalitions feel like there's a overlap at all, I know we're like a little bit of an outlier, but to the extent you're even just curious and you want to attend one of those, like please reach out, like it's open, right? The other thing is I want to take a page maybe from the youth coalition and ask whether you all care if I assign, or I won't assign them, but if I put out a call for volunteers to act as liaisons to your committees. I don't know that they'll ever contribute. I don't, I don't know that they will ever have anything to say, but if you wouldn't mind them participating like as an observer essentially so that we can um, keep track of, because I can't keep track of 18 things, um, uh, so that there would be a more decent, we're very decentralized, we're, we're very, very decentralized. Um, there would be a decentralized way, more centralized maybe than normal, for us to, to participate or at least keep track of what all you are doing, because I do think sometimes there's more synergy than is expected just because we're blockchain. I, oh, I should say I'm Carla Reyes, by the way, from the blockchain technology uh, dynamic collision. But so if anyone have an objection to, a, to putting out a call for, Lee, like they would be liaisons. They, there's no, it's very unlikely that they would show up on their own without a little uh, uh, push. Um, okay, no objections. All right, thanks. Judy, yes. Thank you very much, Marcus. Uh, my name is Judy from Kenya. Um, I'm listening to the conversation and it's very interesting and I'm just wondering whether um, it is time that we started uh, discussing dynamic collisions down to the regionals and down to the uh, national initiatives. Um, just the way the lady from the youth IGF is just saying that probably the youth may not come to the um, youth coalitions, but probably if you introduced this down at the regional and at the national, where uh, we are finding that um, youth IGF is gaining popularity, then they can be able to understand so that when they come to the global platform, it's not something new to them, it's something that they have engaged in. Thank you. I think we're slowly reaching the end of our allotted time. Would you have her? No, 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 okay. <laughs> okay, yeah. Uh, so I have one uh, other oh. thing. I do want to, I want to say, I, if we're going to um, have a session that focuses on cross-cutting themes, I prefer, and I know this goes against other folks' comments, but I would prefer, from our perspective, the, like, smaller group idea, um, or focusing on, because... It, 
I'm going to be honest, the SDGs, and we've done this twice now, it's hard for us, right? Like, we, yeah, that's not really the focus of blockchain technology development, and maybe, and people are, are thinking about it in terms of governance, but certainly, like, climate change, that would be the most divisive discussion uh, amongst us for a variety of reasons. It has implications for, like, the which version, right? And the, for the members, that would be very hard. So to the, it's not that it shouldn't be discussed, though, but to the extent that it is, maybe it's for a smaller group that is more directly attached to it or something, But there's right? possibly because of that that no one is discussing because it's so, yeah. It actually gets discussed quite a bit, but uh, not um, they're not the discussions you'd want on the main stage, maybe? Uh, they're, they're not very diplomatic always, uh, is what I'm trying to say. Uh, well, we don't have to decide now on what we want to propose for next year, but uh, I think... It, it was a very interesting and very good discussion, I think, uh, around the table here, very informative. And I think we have given Utah and Gunela good arguments when you go into the first MAG meeting for defending the dynamic coalitions. Jutta, would you like to conclude the session? Yes, thank you, Marcus. Uh, I would like to thank all of you for coming to the cooperation session. Uh, I think, do think, as like Marcus said, we had a very good uh, discussion. We have lots of new suggestions uh, on the table, so we will bring that forward to, to the first MAC meeting in the new term. Um, I would like to inform you that I've produced uh, the report for yesterday's main session which was very difficult to narrow it down to 300 words. So if you don't <laughs> feel you enough represented, please uh, just get back to me. We now have two weeks' time that we can elaborate on the more extensive report and everything that has not gone into the first short report that shall, be, shall then be going into the more substantive report. So thanks a lot, and I hope to see you in the closing ceremony and, and the afternoon sessions as well. Thank you. Thank you. If you. If you don't mind, I just wanted to thank all of you. Um, sorry, this is Nadia from the Youth Coalition Internet Governance. I want to thank you all of you for uh, the last two years. Um, this is the end of my statutory term. Officially from this meeting on, I uh, don't represent YSIG anymore. Um, at the end of my statutory term, I have to hand over to a new um, uh, steering committee and they will be coming in. But I wanted to thank you all for your faith in, uh, in, in